community can see who we're talking to. Um, let's see. I believe I believe everybody who said they could join is here. Let me check the, the channel over here. See if we have questions. Let's go back over here. As I'm looking for all the right channels to see. So it would be Talk 11, day, Zeke Week 21, uh, Day 3, Talk 11 um, is where you could, you know, uh, ask your questions. Or in, let's see, there we go. So with that, Robin, I know you have lots of questions that you could ask any particular person on this in this group. Um, and I'm admitting Justin and Seth now. So is there something that is particularly a burning question that you have for one of the other speakers, Robin, before I start asking you all questions? Well, good question. Let me think about that. Is my audio actually correct? I think I fixed my... Can you guys hear me okay? Only when you touch it, they're, they're static, so... Okay, so that means it should be fixed. Um, static and again, but we'll, we'll live with it. Don't worry about it. We'll, yeah. we'll just... So my question maybe for, for people would be, so what is, what area should you really be working on? I and mean, what is like, like from, everybody has, has a different perspective on Zeke. So um, maybe we can, people can chime in a little bit. What, where should we put effort? I can make one comment. Um, it was mentioned as an area that is going to be worked on. So I just want to second it. It was that idea of having I forget what the actual term was was used, but it's scripts more like bizarre, where you're taking the underlying data that's created and then you're applying an additional layer of logic to help people understand what they mean uh, and potentially discover new insights about your network by virtue of applying some type of um, smarts to the logs. I'm not talking artificial intelligence. I'm talking none of that. Just like when when these logs happen, it is likely the following. So just like in Bazaar, like if you look at the raw SMB logs, it's tough to figure out what's happening, but you can get a bizarre event. And honestly, in most cases, that's just what the analyst is looking for is they just want a tip to, to direct their attention and then they can dive into the details. It almost sounds like you're making the case for there being, it, it, there's, I think, been this traditional thing in security. The old thing was just give me the alert, which is like way up here. And then there was, Zeke was like, well, okay, give me the, you know, sort of what happened and it's way down here, but you really have to understand the protocols. You're making the case almost that like, maybe there's sort of infinite layers between there of like other higher level things before it's like, you know, this is bad, just go do this thing we know better. But like I mean, there's that, other levels of things there. And that's the thing is it's like uh, what customers want, they don't just want an alert and they don't just want context, they want both of them tied together. <laughs> And they don't know what they mean by that when they say it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but to be fair, I don't either. So it, <laughs> I don't want to sound like I know what I'm talking about either. Well, I think ultimately a customer wants the bad thing to not happen. But a certain <laughs> amount of experience lets you realize, well, that can't always be the case. So then the next best thing is to get some understanding so that hopefully you can stop the adversary before they accomplish their mission. And then- I think there was a whole yeah. documentary on that though, but it involves people laying on their back in a pool or something. Oh no, I have, oh, I have not heard of that. No one gonna get the, it was the Tom Cruise movie. I was making a reference, the pre-cogs where they, was, they were stopping pre-crime. Oh yeah, okay. Oh darn, my joke fell flat, Never mind. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, we are working on putting that kind of quantum uh, prediction into Zeke, just not happening yet. <laughs> That'll be in 6.0, right? Yeah. <laughs> Gotta have goals. So uh, I think uh, Christian sort of answered Smoot's question, but Christian, do you want to uh, tell the group what Smoot's question was? And uh... Oh, I just, yeah, sure, guys. Um, I saw a question from Smoot in the... Uh... The Slack channel for for this this call, and he is just wondering about what it would take to, or how to go about changing the format of the logs as they are shipped with Zeke. And it just sounded like a like a perfectly adequate question for a ticket, right? Like let's just talk about it and, and see what needs to be done. Um, 
or or you submit a merge request and see if you can get exactly. someone to pull it. <laughs> it's sort of the end run around everything. So stopped him. One one of the things that that people have said throughout the the week and and or they a question that they liked when I ask folks yesterday so i'll ask you all um and anyone can take this if there was something that you could have done different with seek because most of you on here are merge masters that were part of the os team uh what would you have done and why what would you have done different and why and um if, if you could wave a magic wand and have a wish list item magically appear into Zeek right now what would it be and why Nobody wants to go first. Seth, this sounds like a great question for you. Like something you could have done different and why. <laughs> I was worried you were going to call me out. So the question was something you could have done differently. Mm -hmm. Well, or I just, I think I just did a talk on that. That was one thing. <laughs> <laughs> Probably got loads of things. I don't know. Um, I would have done the notice framework differently. I don't like the way the notice framework is. I, I sort of, the notice framework, uh, I think Vern, you and I were talking about it the other day where the notice framework was one of the things that was not really ported from the old, old, old notice.bro. It was very lightly touched and I just never really loved the design of it, but I didn't have any good ideas for any ways to do it better. So I just basically brought it forward and, well, the earlier form was worse, so. Yeah, but it was it wasn't substantially different, to be honest. I, I didn't, it, I didn't really like spend a lot of effort on it. A lot of the things that are in Zeek were, I mean, this was years ago, but like I put a lot of time into just thinking about how they got used and whatever. But the notice one, I just didn't. We just There's probably infinite others that I'm just not thinking of right now. <laughs> But I would I would throw Z control into the ring here, <laughs> which and so which uh, Christian now gets to finally fixed. I, I was just uh, wondering whether to bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's the story where Z control was really this thing that originally was the cluster shelf that I brought out of pure laziness for myself because I was tired of logging into so many different systems and spawning uh, cluster nodes. Um, then unfortunately Seth got a hold of it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you committed it to a repo that was your bad so yeah right so i found it speaking speaking, <laughs> speaking about mistakes <laughs> um, so no i mean it was never uh, originally was not meant for widespread use um it, it evolved into something i mean it, we iterated quite a bit on it but in the end some of the quirks we never got out i think and <laughs> they show also i think the world changed around it a little bit too oh, that is yes, what yeah, like a lot of the stuff that we could use now, like systemd or even um, like OpenRC, you can do process supervision, like all the stuff that we kind of had to do ourselves, you actually can do very easily using some operating system frameworks that would have been very hard back then. True, but that checking through cron, I think, was never acceptable. Right, yeah. <laughs> Um, and going back to your basic question, uh, the one I would add is I wish way back in the day um, I had appreciated that it was describing activity that was the core value add, not detecting in real time. And if I think with that shift, we might have found our community more readily. We might have thought more how to tell the story. For the longest time, it was, do you use row or do you use snort and it was just the wrong question and i kind of knew it was the wrong question but i didn't know the right way to say to explain that so cool well they've been about three questions that have popped up uh in the slack channel that i've now posted in chat so if you all whoever wants to take the first one in chat could repeat the question and answer it that would be great so if you look at the chat can everybody see that So. I'm happy to take the second. Okay. Who wants to take the first one? 
And for those who are wondering what is the first one, it's something I'm curious about. How many people who run Zeke are using Kafka for data ingestion into a SIM? And what are other connections or connectors people are using? I suspect this might be the wrong set of people to answer that question. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, I, I can talk about that. All right, Justin. Oh, right. I yeah. think both Justin and I can talk about that. Oh, generally, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, a lot of our customers use, you know, varying different things, you know, in Kafka being one of them. And for sure, one thing that I've seen with maybe one or two exceptions every now and then, Kafka tends to be like, the most bulletproof thing that we work with. Like, and a lot of that is just because its architecture is, it just ingests the data. It doesn't parse the data. It doesn't really care what the data is. You know, it's, it has a very well-defined job of ingest the data and persist it somewhere. And we've had customers, you know, spin up a one or more Zeek boxes and just immediately dump, you know, 200,000 records per second into Kafka and it never breaks a sweat. So yeah, it, it's, it still seems like a solid choice if you have a lot of data. And the other benefit of, even if day one, you do something like Zeek into Kafka and then you uh, push Kafka logs into something like Elastic, it enables down the road, other applications to subscribe to that existing uh, data pipeline without having to kind of build yet another, you know, something like that. Like if you if you built something to send Zeek to Elastic and then, oh, you want to send Zeek to this new application, well, now you have to build that the second time. If you put it into Kafka day one and you have an idea to use a new application or a research project, you already have everything you need to just subscribe to your existing data. So it's definitely a good way to architect things. So that's that's my thoughts on Kafka. And Jack, all of that would apply. There are some other alternatives that are very Kafka-ish, and all of that would apply to that as well. Joe, did you want to add anything to that? All right. Uh, oh, uh, you... what I'd say, sorry, uh, one sec. Uh, Go ahead. But, uh, no, uh, what I'd say with Kafka is Kafka is kind of bad in some ways, but literally everything else that solves the same problem is worse. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it, it does solve that problem of like, you get your logs, they go somewhere, and then you can get them to one or more places elsewhere. And, um, and it, it works, <laughs> I think that's the thing. <laughs> Well, well, it yeah. does look like Gary followed up on his question and said, is there a reason, he wanted to lead up to the question, is there a reason why something like Kafka isn't a native capability within Zeek? Well, I think Zeek, Zeek plugins actually are probably why. I mean, we're this is the kind of code that we generally would like to not do in the core because you know there's infinite numbers of things that you could integrate with. And I, I think there is a valid case to be made for like literally everybody does this one thing but beyond that, like maybe there's not much of a case, especially there's not much of a case if like the plugin embedding. Well, so what? You just embed it in and then your binary has that in it. It's not, it, like from your perspective, it's literally in Zeek. It's just not in Zeek. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think that that's probably the main reason is that there's infinite numbers of things that we could integrate with and it's just impossible to maintain all of that. Yeah, well, we, we did used to, right? But it often caused problems with differences in, in release cadences. I, I think that those. that's partly why Robin suddenly got motivated to do the plugin infrastructure because he saw the creep <laughs> of these type of things going into Zeek. And it speaks to the plugin infrastructure that that kind of stuff is doable very nicely. Right? Cool. I mean, I don't think that framework has changed much over the years and it just does the right thing. It's cool. I mean, there was definitely the motivation there, just seeing this, there, there are so many things one could do, but, but moving everything into Zeek is, was, was not an option. It's just not maintainable. Um, that's where I came from, of course. Thank you. Um, Vern, do you want to take the second question? 
Sure. So the second question is, are there upcoming features that would help reduce impact of high volume logging bursts, volume driven log dedupe basically? <clears throat> and I can't address that specific case, but the Robin mentioned on the roadmap, um, thinking about a sort of more powerful framework for logging or notions of logging. And in particular, this has come up in various contexts where if somehow Zeke could hold on to a log for a few seconds even and efficiently somehow, um, then logs could be merged, deduped, decorated, a lot, a lot becomes a possibility. What that will look like, I don't know. I find it you know, interesting to explore. I look forward to, to tackling it, but I, I think it's, it's challenging, but powerful. And so that, that would be the way to address this issue inside Zeek. Any other thoughts from anyone else? Yeah, there are actually a bunch of features already in Zeek that can be used to help with that. Like there are certain things you could do, for example, detect like an, a very large amount of DNS queries for the same name. And if you happen to notice that trip a threshold, you can use the logging hooks that were just talked about to stop logging that, or, or possibly even filter it off to a different file. And I use that a lot at NCSA. We'd, we'd have a lot of cases where some application would break, some DNS record would get typoed or deleted, and you'd have you know an entire gigantic cluster all trying to resolve the same name over and over and over again, you know, potentially tens of thousands of times a second. And it's it's pretty easy to have a script that just uses all the existing functionality to detect when something like that happens and either ignore it completely or just send it off to a different log file that maybe you don't send to your scene or something like that. So it's, it's a little, yeah. some assembly required, but we, you can actually do that now. So part of the challenge here might be that that this is often a case by case thing. So so if, if one looks at one specific log, then one can probably figure something out. But it's finding a generic mechanism is, is, is sure. Hard. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I mean, I, maybe as one example, we just did it for SSL, right? So the certificate logging has has vastly changed, and 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 the the volume that is being output is is, is a lot less now. Sure. Yeah. It's, it's also likely very site specific, like. Some sites, if you suggested potentially, you know, not logging all DNS queries, they might, you know, almost have a heart attack. Like, oh no, we, you know, for auditing purposes, we must log every query. I don't care how many times it happens. And other sites would probably be more than happy to not have 10,000 queries a second of like some application that someone broke. So there's lots of different opinions on what's even a reasonable thing to do. That actually goes back to a different idea I've or I've heard in various places. Is is like we, we could start shipping different like default configuration, like different profiles. So we could have a profile for um, comprehensive logging that really records everything, mm. and then maybe a different profile which says, "Well, I, I'm really want to reduce my my top priority is reduce the log volume," and then we we, we change the knobs for that for that. Yeah, but that's a good idea. Like we could do something, for example, for DNS to say. You know, we're we're only going to maybe log unique queries and answers, and we potentially don't even care what the client is. So you could just do dedupe by query and answer, and save potentially you know ninety percent of your your log volume. Uh, and that is also something we could just have in the package manager, depending on you know how site specific it could be. But yeah, that's certainly one thing to keep in mind is just how flexible the Zeek scripting and logging framework is. You can do so many of these things just yourself with a script or a package. You don't actually have to change Zeek to do that. The that package that is a idea nice of... thought. So we could, add, so, sorry, so, so we, we could add a package that actually just kind of reduces log volume across Mac. Richard. Sorry for you. Yeah, yeah, Robin, I love your idea. Like if there were a little script that you ran, like a little wizard that says, do you want to turn everything on? Do you want to, like, is this, are you running this at home? Like just ask some questions. Like Security Engine does a good job with this. They they basically have 
do you want to, to like to just pick all defaults here? Boom. If you pick all defaults, it just hits all the defaults. Otherwise, it goes into an ex extensive set of configurations that eventually just produces a configuration script that deploys it. So that, that's kind of a neat idea. I think that would really make it easier for people to um, make that first step towards customization because afterwards they could look and see what what was the result of that? What did the file look like? Oh, these are the options. I don't have to run the script again or whatever it is, but I think that's a great idea. And and speaking of the uh, Zeek scripting language as a good segue into our third question here, it was what features of the Zeek scripting language do you like? What things do you dislike? What would you change given the opportunity? Christian? <laughs> I think I got one there. So I, I continue to really like um, the control you have over your state. So in particular, the attributes on, on tables, you know, like this, this ability to say, okay, if you haven't touched this thing in a certain you know, amount of time, but just get rid of it. Because I can't really think of other languages that would give you that sort of level of detail and high level control. So like you, you have to think about that stuff more. Um, and Christian, let me jump in there though. I would really like it to also be, you could say, no more than this many entries or no more than this many bytes. You just took away my second thought. That's awesome. No, uh, at the same time, I'm often surprised that we don't have sort of more fleshed out caching structures or anything like that, right? Like you can't really control the order and so forth. But my, my second point that I was gonna mention here was gonna be another one. And um, so we, we sort of like to think of Zeek as this sort of distributed event-based system, right? And I. I've been hitting that a lot in this recent cluster work. And the moment you start building things on top of asynchronous eventing, it becomes hard to have nice code flow. This is just a very traditional problem of like, you know, so this thing comes in, uh, you know, like tying code flow together across things that happen in different points in your code base. And I know that we've tried to address this several times in the past, sort of, and, you know, when is one of them. Um, and I don't know what the better answer for this is, but I think that is hard. That feels too hard. It's it's fundamentally hard. It's a uh, um, <laughs> yep. software engineering step, but um, and a few times uh, I've seen us trying to address it uh, internally. Um, again, speaking as someone internal as a like as a consumer rather than as a member of the open source team. Um, it's like trying to address this as someone trying to build on top of Zeek. Uh, it's the best way we can do it is use timestamps <laughs> and then hope for the best. <laughs> I'll add another thing about the language, which is I think the any type is not a great idea. And I would love it if we move towards something like templating. I mean, not literally templating, but the notion of types, meta types. And I, I think it under the hood, any is a, not fun um, having dealt with it a bunch and it's also potentially a bit buggy. So I, I, but you know, I think unless you're a scripting connoisseur, you don't really care about that point, um, but I do. <laughs> and as we only have a few minutes left, um, uh, I wanted to give each of you um, who are in this particular session right now, the opportunity or anything that you would like to tell the community that you haven't had an opportunity to do so today or anything that you would like to point out to the community like documentation wise or something that's really important to you all that you haven't shared that you would like to at this point. Tim, we'll start with you and I'll go just around the, the no? I really don't have anything to be honest. I mean, okay. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm so deep inside the code that I'm like, I'm not a user of the software in the end. That uh, you know, I, people are coming to me when something is broken, but beyond that, I don't really have much else beyond that. For those that don't know, when you see the releases and when you see the new updates to the uh, documentation and other things behind the scenes, that is the magic that Tim is working on. So be sure you say thanks to him when, you, when you're enjoying any of those new updates and things like that. Joe, is there anything you would like to say? Um, uh, I really don't have much else um, from uh, above and beyond what I've said. <laughs> All right. Robin, anything you want to reiterate to the community? 
Well, not much beyond what I, what I said earlier. So I think really, um, I would like to encourage people to just speak up. If you see something you like, you don't like, let us know. I mean, that's the only way that, that we can incorporate um, what you think about Zeek into what we do. And, and um, that's just not the users who download Zeek from, you know, Zeek.org. It doesn't matter where you get your Zeek from, whether you get it from Corelight or Security Onion or the website or one of the major, you know, Linux distributions in their universe, wherever you get your Zeek. If there is something, feedback that you would like the team to know, please get it, you know, jump on to Slack, jump onto the mailing list. If you know somebody on the Zeek project, you know, send them a note. Um, it, it's not that, you know, we, we don't listen to the, or Robin and team don't listen to the requests. Sometimes it doesn't make it to them. So make sure that you um, either are putting it into the GitHub into a discussion, an issue, file a ticket, you know, or just jump into Slack and say, I wish, or could you do? And then we'll get you to the right people. So just to echo uh, Robin's request, it doesn't matter where and you're I sitting. And, and let me maybe admit, sometimes it also takes repetition, right? So, so if, if, if we hear something just from one person, it's, it's hard to gauge, is that something that more generally is an issue with how something is currently working? Or is that a feature that, that more people would benefit from? So if the more, the more we hear the same kind of theme, I mean, the more it, I would almost say internal pressure essentially will have to actually address it, right? And that's, um, we always, we have so many ideas, we, we always need to trade off like the cycles we have against um, what we can do. But, but the more people are interested in something and, and tell us so, um, the more we can, can focus on that. Exactly. Christian, what about you? Thank you, Robin. Slam dunk. That was going to be my point. I don't have anything else. Speak up, people. Don't fight too hard. Just just, just like ask right away. Yeah. Vern? I'd just uh, repeat the thing I said yesterday, which is um, the project would really be great to have corporate sponsors of various forms. And if you're in a position to try to facilitate that, please reach out to the leadership team. Um, it will really help a lot. Benjamin, thank you, Vern. Be Benjamin, anything from you? Yeah, maybe something for that um, contribution part. So I think like if you, if people, I mean, like all the problems are kind of like tricky and hard and you have to, like users have to figure out how to set up stuff and it's a lot of messy work potentially. But the, if like users realize that something is like too hard, like if they have that like slight feeling that this is weird, why is this so complicated? I think that's like super valuable feedback and is like a first step to thinking about new features, removing bugs. And that's, I, mean, I think that's a useful contribution that people, I mean, that's, I see that very rarely that people say like, this is hard, like harder than it should be being Zeek scripting and everything else, right? But I think that would be useful. Thank you, Benjamin. Or? Oh, I, I have nothing. Thank you. Okay. Richard, anything you'd like to reiterate? And thank you so much for your keynote this morning. Sure. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I would say when you're interacting with the community, whether by email or Slack, the more you can tell us, and you want to ask a question, the more you can tell us about what you're asking what you've tried, what version of Zeek you're using, where the question is originating from, all of that will help us. Because sometimes we'll get a question, it'll be something like, uh, I'm trying to compare Zeek and Snort. What's, what do I do? Or something like that. Not that that's an actual question, but I'm trying to get into the, the feel of that. And what I generally infer from that is, you're a university student, your professor, is locked in the mindset that Vern actually mentioned earlier of there's this you know IDS mode and they need to do these benchmark comparisons between these two IDSs. That is a much different situation from one where someone says, "Hey, I'm trying. I'm using Zeek 4.0 or whatever. I'm having this edge case. This is what I've tried. This is what I think it might be. I don't know. Can somebody help me?" So the more and you know, and I've been using Zeek for two years or something like that. So that that will help us quickly get to the root of what your problem is, I think, and be able to help you. Um, and so everyone, I think everyone is very patient uh, uh, whenever we interact with each other, but sometimes I, I know myself, I have to be careful because sometimes I'll say, 
you know, I feel like you're a student, right? And your professor asked you, you know, that's your homework assignment. And, you know, I think, do you really want to be using the community to solve your homework assignment? But if you've given us a little more background and you're just trying to figure out which tool to use versus another, that is a much different scenario. You know, that's good advice, no matter what open source community you're in when you're filing um, any type of ticket. The more information that you can give folks, the, the easier and better it is, uh, the answer will be. Um, and Justin, what about you? Anything from you? Or what were we talking about again? <laughs> you would like to share with the community or anything oh. you'd like to add to the community or something you haven't been able to say today that you, now that you're in front of the community that you'd like to say. Oh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, I think like others have said, just, you know, ask questions. Um, if there's something that you can't figure out or you're not even sure if Z could do, there's a good chance someone either already has a script that might do that or knows how to write one. So definitely don't feel that if like Zeke doesn't do some specific thing that you want out of the box, 